As I was, you know, getting into this research, I have always felt as a scholar that there was this expectation that I wasn't able <laughs> to talk openly about being like a faith-based person mm -hmm. or someone who has spiritual practices because somehow being a scientist precludes you from being spiritual. And it's almost as if they are meant to be these separate entities or these separate camps. A spiritual person, then you can't possibly be a scientist. And if you're a scientist, you can't be a spiritual person. And one of the beautiful things for for me is I remember in my own educational experience uh, working um, and meeting actually a, a physicist and he's literally the most brilliant physicist in the world. Like he just blew my mind away how talented and gifted this professor was. And I remember having this moment when I saw him at my church. Right. And I, ha I remember having this like wild, like just this moment of just being like, wow, this is the first time those two like competing universes collided. And I just remember just being so awe inspired. And I remember then going out and learning about sign of these ideas about how we can be scientists who also are OK with the mysteries of the world. And mm -hmm. where do we kind of reconcile that disconnect? And I knew very quickly when I was writing about resiliency and stress management and stressing wisely that I would be remiss if I didn't talk about spirituality because for so many persons, that is where we find safety. That is where we find our refuge. That's where we find rest. And what I really came out of that research area learning was it doesn't matter what you believe. And there's so many different variations on themes. Mm -hmm. It's these ideas of these like core guiding values or these principles about being of service, about having a humble heart, about forgiving, about love, about compassion. Those are universal across those different practices. And so for me, again, I would have been remiss if I didn't write that chapter on spirituality. And it was it was hard to write knowing that in yeah. you know 2023, this is a very polarizing topic, yet it's the truest thing that we learned about wellness is that people who are well, they have trust. They have faith that it all works out. And one of the little pieces though, I, I really find it so important to share is I don't believe everything happens for a reason. And I know so often when we're going through, you know, health journeys and recoveries and wellness, we, we want to make meaning and think like all of this served a purpose. Some things just suck. Some things are horrible. And I came upon that having supported parents who going through a natural disaster lost their children. And you can't tell me sitting with a grieving parent that all of this happens for a reason because some things are just horrific. It's what do we do with those experiences? And when people find that sense of purpose and values and are driven in that kind of altruistic way to find healing and recovery, that's a pretty beautiful thing to witness. And people can be very, very well, despite having gone through some pretty horrible things. Yeah, there's a lovely idea in self-compassion practice. We bring ourselves compassion not to feel better, but because we feel bad. Yeah. And that sort of sounds a little bit like you're describing that. Yeah. Just honoring the suffering because it is, because it's here mm -hmm. and we don't need to pretend that there's a reason for it or that there's sunny days ahead, although that may mm -hmm. come later, whatever. Are you familiar with, as I understand it, there's research that suggests sort of non-religious societies, so secular societies have higher levels of happiness than religious ones, and religious people in secular societies have better mental health and well-being than secular people in secular societies. Have you heard yeah, of that? Before? Yeah, there's so much research. Unfortunately, exactly. some's complementary, some is, you know, okay. kind of use it differently. But, but what we actually found is when it came to wellness, yeah. people who had some form of a spiritual or religious practice were mm -hmm. able to be able to weather far more difficult scenarios and right. situations. They were able to find relief. They were able to find healing and recovery in a very unique way to the point where we couldn't exclude it. Like there, there's something there. And even as I shared at the beginning, when we were chatting about my really tumultuous teenagerhood, yeah. the fact that I was rescued from my car accident. And again, I talk openly in lots of different places about what that looked like. But there's, there's no way that I can't believe that that miracle was already in motion. Like that person who saved my life was already driving that road. He was the person who was going to be able to be part of my recovery by choosing to get involved. And he rescued me, saved my life. 
And again, I, that's not by chance. And so I think when we kind of take a step back and just realize that all of this is interconnected and there's probably more things that we don't know about our wellness than we do know about it, where I think is a good starting point is to recognize how we feel it shows, it really impacts how we show up in our lives. And the better we feel, the better we're able to show up in our lives for ourselves and others and in community. I am very grateful that you watched to the end of this video. Please click one of the boxes to watch more of our content and otherwise have a great day. Peace out.